See, this luggage is still full of all my stuff from Japan. Like, it needs to be unpacked, guys. Like, it's out of control. I've been home for two months, maybe. But that's all because I've been waiting to film this freaking video. And trust me, it's a good one. I, I promise you, the contents of that suitcase is insane. Guys, being home from Japan honestly sucks. I feel like once you've been to that part of the world, North America is just automatically missing something. Needless to say, this Japan haul is very overdue. This is a video that has been on the back burner for me for some time now, mostly because I have been managing my depression over the very sudden and very traumatic loss of my little dog, Rupert, who um, suddenly and unexpectedly died in a very traumatic way while I was in Japan. Anyways, I'm going to save that story for the very end so that those of you who are here to see the Japan haul can get after it with me. And if you're interested in the tea for what happened to my dog, that will be shared at the very end. Okay, let's head to my other room, which is kind of like my packing, biohacking, and YouTube studio room to be, where we're gonna get into this haul. All right, all right, let's properly get into it. Okay, the first category is going to be skincare. That includes lotions, face masks, sunscreens, and makeup. If you don't already know, Japan is renowned for having some of the best skincare products, routines, and services in the entire world. And it definitely showed like all of the people in Japan had the most incredible skin. So I was like, I am buying every single skincare option available. And I did. Please keep in mind that I'm going to be sharing the prices of everything in Canadian dollars, even though obviously I bought them in Japanese yen, but this is just like what is serving my memory best. Okay, let's start out with face masks. I am so glad that I went overboard and bought like literally four packages. The fourth package is already been used up. Sorry, I don't know where that went, but I bought four of these, okay? So I don't know the difference between these two colors, but this was five or six dollars Canadian. I think there's like 50 in here. This one was a little bit more expensive. It was $15. And I don't know how many sheets are in here. Oh, also 50. But this one is like NMN, retinol, like has all the things in it. Japan is just well known for their skincare game, like especially their face masks. So I did not hold back when buying them. So definitely recommend getting yourself some face masks. I I will say that whenever I put one of these on, I almost don't need a nighttime skin routine because my skin is just like so hydrated and giving, like <laughs> obsessed. This also isn't quite a face mask, but I did get these Biore black head strip remover things for your nose. And you can get like similar things here in Canada, but these ones are so good. They literally like pull the grossest stuff out of my nose. So really, really love these. Buckle up for this one because I did so much research on the best affordable Japanese products and I'm really, really happy with the ones that I did end up buying. First is the Hadalabo Hyaluronic Acid. Do not leave Japan without buying this stuff. I got the premium bottle, which was about $14 Canadian and and it's a decent size. This brand is affordable and meant to be one of the best in terms of quality. And I learned that it has like seven or eight different types of hyaluronic acid in it. Like I didn't even know that that many types of hyaluronic acid existed, but <laughs> when I tell you, you need this, like you need this. It is literally the silkiest moisturizer I have ever, oh my God, put on my skin. It's just like, so hydrating, glowy, it does the most for you. So like I said, do not leave Japan without buying this. I use this both in the AM and PM. I will be very heartbroken when it's run out. However, a little life hack for you coming at you. Get ready for this one, okay? Japan, so efficient, so effective, so brilliant. If you don't have room for these like plastic containers or if you want to buy like more than one, these, like I said, are about $14 Canadian. However, they also sell refillable bags of the exact same product. And this is like 10 or $11 Canadian. So you save yourself a couple dollars. And this is just so much easier to pack. Like, 
I wish I bought more of these, but I've got a nice little refill for when I do finally go through this full bottle. It really just gives you like this beautiful dewy finish on the skin. We're here for it. Okay, next is this iconic vitamin C duo. I find that most vitamin Cs feel really like itchy and scratchy on your skin. This one is really, really smooth. The bottle looks like, like this. And I think that this is, again, like the premium version, about 13 or $14 Canadian for this. And then this bottle is kind of like a vitamin C toner. It's a little bit more viscous in how like thick it is, but I find that using these together has made my skin look brighter, has really removed like those dark spots, which is really what vitamin C is for. Uh, this was also around $14. And you best believe I bought a real fillable bag for this guy too. Like I have vitamin C for the next two years. I feel like we're, we're good. Another thing that I bought, which was recommended is this oil cleansing face wash by Kose. I almost didn't buy this because I have so many other face washes that I use and love, but I'm really pleasantly surprised and happy that I did buy this because it so effortlessly removes all of your makeup. Like I will use this first just to get everything off and then go in with some of my other cleansers, but this was maybe eight or $10 Canadian. It was definitely worth the purchase, so highly recommend this guy too. All right, next let's get into sunscreens. If you know, you know. Japan is just like one of the best places that is well known for their epic sunscreens. And it did not disappoint. I bought three different types of sunscreens and honestly, maybe that was a little bit overboard, but I'm so glad I did because each of these is very different from the next. I honestly couldn't even tell you which one is my favorite. I love all three of them. I think these are meant to be the best affordable sunscreens. None of these were over $14. I think this one was maybe the most expensive, but let's get into all three of these sunscreens now. I'm actually currently wearing these two guys right now. This one is the Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel UV. It's meant to be used as like a makeup primer and have a little bit of a like shimmer underline to it. And I'm not like a shimmery girl, but it's really nice. It's really subtle. And then this one, I don't know what it's called. Sauna, it's completely entirely in Japanese. But this is a tinted moisturizing uh, sunscreen that I used on this side of my face. And just to kind of show you like the difference, if you can see any, there's almost none, but very, very slight, I can tell. The SPF in all of these sunscreens is 40 to 45, which is a good level of SPF as anything under 40 is basically useless. So they're quite effective in protecting your skin against the harmful UV rays. The best part about all three of these sunscreens is they are mineral sunscreens, which is the only type of sunscreen that I like to use because it's free from a lot of the other toxic chemicals that are present in non-mineral sunscreens, okay? The bad part about, or like the downside to mineral sunscreens is that the active ingredient is zinc, I believe. So it makes you look really pale. It's like very white in color and it does not rub into the skin very well. Whereas you can see, both of these sunscreens really blended into my skin perfectly. Like I've never ever used a sunscreen that was mineral that blended in as nicely as these two did. It just absorbs really nicely, leaving a glowy sort of like pearly finish for the mermaid one. And yeah, I just am obsessed with these. However, if you can only get one of these three, like if you had to pick just one, I would say go with this one. <laughs> This is the Sunstick Nature Republic, and it is a powdery sunstick, 50 SPF, 50 plus SPF, we love to see it. But the cool thing about this sunscreen is, A, it smells incredible, like I'm always avoiding fragrance. It's very, very lightly scented. I can't even tell you what this smells. It smells like sunshine. But this is a powder stick, so you almost cannot even feel it, even see it as you apply it onto your skin. It's meant to be applied on top of makeup so it doesn't like smudge your makeup at all. And like, <laughs> it works. I was so glad to have this with me, just like toss it in my purse, toss it in my bag when I was exploring Tokyo because it was so hot. I was there at the end of August and just being able to like rub this on top of even just my forehead because I was sweating profusely and I knew my sunscreen was being sweat off. This was such a great and easy way to like reapply it. 
So definitely one of my favorite things that I bought while in Japan. And it's made in Korea, also very well known for amazing skincare. So like you guys cannot go wrong with this. Okay, now let's move on to my next category, which is makeup. I don't really wear a lot of makeup, but I do appreciate really good makeup for the types of stuff that I do wear. And I'm gonna start out first with this Vise lip gloss. Do not sleep on this lip gloss. I think it was like $10, maybe, maybe eight. And it's like a very natural light plumping lip gloss. I don't know why I didn't buy more than one of these. It's like very lightly tingly, a little bit minty in like smell and flavor, and it lightly plumps your lips. But my favorite part about this lip gloss is that it does not come off. I'm not kidding you. Guys, I'll put this on first thing in the morning, have a coffee, have a celery juice, go about my day, talk on the phone, blah, blah, blah. Hours later, it's still on, like it's still, is giving, you know? So I definitely recommend this little lip gloss number here. The color is SP001, it's just like the light one. So love it, love, love. I will be saving the best makeup product that I bought for last because it truly deserves its own moment. Okay, the next thing that I bought is this, what is this brand? Okay, I don't actually know the name of the brand. Okay, fail, but it's in this like tube and it's eyebrow tint. I love a good eyebrow tint. Guys, this was $7. There was about 12 different shades, so you will definitely have success in finding your shade. But this stuff goes on and it just feels and looks really natural. Um, I feel like most eye eyebrow gels here in North America have like three or four shades, so it was really nice to like have 12 different options from this particular brand. I find normally when I'm doing my eyebrows, I have to like pencil them in and then use a gel on top. But for whatever reason, this seems to be like a two in one. So it's completely removed my need to like pencil in my eyebrows. Also, I just put this stuff on and I'm like good to go. If I could pick one thing in my entire makeup bag to keep and use every single day, it would be this product. Because if the eyebrows aren't giving, like you need to figure out your life. Eyebrows are everything. If you know, you know. Okay, lastly, and yes, I have saved the best for last because every single person on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere else was like ranting and raving about the flawless airbrush foundations that you can get in Japan only that are meant to like look like you have an Instagram filter on. She is beauty, she is grace, she is the red cushion tear tear and she is only $30. Like why are most decent concealers here? Like even Maybelline is $30 and anything above that is like 60 plus. This was 30 bucks. And if you're not sure that you wanna commit an entire $30 to this large like concealer, I did see smaller ones that were 30, or sorry, smaller ones that were $15. So if you're not wanting to commit to like a great big huge size, there are options. The only downside I will say is there were like literally three shades. The shade that I got is 23N Sand. And when I tell you that this was the darkest shade, <laughs> Like it's kind of sad, unfortunately. They don't have many shade options. It's not that inclusive. Um, but if you do fall into those shades, like I definitely recommend trying it out. It has this like little pillow cushiony thing on the inside, which I'm pretty sure is why it gives you this airbrushed flawless look. Like it's this spongy applicator where you can just like tamp and pat the product onto your skin. It literally just like soaks in and disappears onto your face. Like I'm wearing it right now. Does it look like I'm wearing concealer? No, no it does not. So yeah, I give this product like a 12 on 10. It's one of my favorite things from the Japan haul. Do not sleep, just treat yourself and try this out. Okay, let's wrap up our like beauty, skincare, like category here. I will wrap it up with hair care. I bought this like massive bag of the Honey Creamy Hair Treatment. This is meant to be the best hair like leave-in treatment that you can get. I also got their honey hair oil. I have been using this. It literally smells like honey. Oh my God. Oh, it's so, so good. And it does have like real Manuka and raw acacia honey inside. So definitely do get yourself the hair oil. Not expensive guys, like maybe 10 to $12 Canadian. 
This guy was maybe like $15 or $17, but like it's huge. And again, love the packaging. These were the refillable bags. I didn't get the little plastic bottles. Instead, I just went for the bags. But if you see the Honey brand, they have shampoos, they have conditioners. Try it out. It's so, so good. I love it. Oh yeah, I also got this like, what is this? Suisse Beauty Clear Black Powder Wash. This is like charcoal powder in these tiny little like capsules. It's like this granular charcoal that's really good for exfoliating. I totally impulse bought these, but uh, great for cleaning out your pores and uh, I, I do really like them. Okay, this product is definitely one of the weirder ones, but I'm so glad that I bought it and I didn't even know it existed, was this eye drop, this diamond eye drop. I saw all the girlies in Japan using this stuff and finally one of them, like I chatted with, told me that this is like the holy grail. This is their Roman empire, all right? This like diamond bottle, premium. Obviously I can't translate any of this, but it's an eye drop. It's an eye drop that actually makes your eyes, like the white part of your eyes, very, very crystally white. I was particularly happy to have these because I was so jet lagged and my eyes just look like little red beady nothings for the first like week of our trip. So I bought this, it was $14 for a little bottle. I can't even imagine how long this is gonna last me, but it does work. Oh my God, does it ever work? Okay, now let's get into food. This is going to include like treats and tea. Like I didn't buy all that much food, but I did get some really cool stuff that I think is worth mentioning. The first I will mention is this iced green tea. If you are going to Sensoji Temple, it's kind of like a huge, I don't wanna say tourist trap, like at the beginning of the temple before you walk in, it's like all these little shops, tons of little like vendors selling tea, selling food, selling like little trinkets. But there is one vendor there that is selling this iced green matcha tea. They're giving out like little samples or little cups that are a dollar each. This is the best freaking iced matcha. I'm so glad that I bought a bag of them. Wish I had bought more, but definitely grab this if you're checking out Sensoji Temple, uh, which I totally recommend. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I also just picked up other matcha powder, Yuji matcha powder. I got this at Don Quixote. Uh, I think it was like 10 bucks. It was not very expensive. I then bought like a more expensive um, matcha that's like beautifully wrapped. I guess I could open it. Why don't I just open it? I love the way that the Japanese culture puts so much love and effort into their packaging. Like, it's just so cute. And this matcha I got in Kyoto, which is meant to be like one of the best places in all of Japan to get your matcha tea. Seijin no Shiro. I don't know, this is meant to be like the real deal. So it's probably super sealed, yeah. Anyways, it's been a long time coming that I've needed to open this. So that was some of the matcha I got. I also just went matcha crazy. To be honest, I've like eaten most of my matcha treats. The matcha Kit Kat bars. Japan is just insane for all the different flavors of Kit Kat bars that they have. But the matcha flavor, bring some home for your matcha loving friends. These are incredible. I also brought home these like crunchy chocolate matcha like I don't know, bars. I got them at the 7-Eleven, delicious. These little tiny like mushroom chocolate cookie things. Like I just had to bring these home. They're so cute. Also mochi, obviously it's it was a no brainer. Like we have to have all of the mochi. I miss mochi so much from Japan. When you go to a 7-Eleven, if you see these Mino, they're like, a little crispy edamame. These are like my favorite salty snack when I was there, especially if you like edamame, they're so good. And then lastly, this is in the food category, even though it's super random and weird. I bought these like digestion tablet natural things. I need to, um, <laughs> translate what this says. But I got this when I was in Doragawa. They're like very well known for having these like digestion, whatever, tablets. I don't even know what to call them. They're like these weird, let's see if I can open this box. They're like these little pellets almost. And you're meant to take them before or after a meal and it helps your body like digest. Comes with this little weird spoon. Guys, look at this spoon. And it has these little like holes in it to pick up the little tiny pellets. I don't know what this is. I just like, again, impulse bought. So like, look, you see the little tablets? So you're meant to just like swallow these. 
Anyways, stay tuned for how this actually goes down, but meant to be really, really good for your gut health and digestion. Okay, so food and snacks are done. What am I gonna talk about next? I'll show you some of the like cool clothes that I got. Um, some of which I don't even have like out here. Um, I found this store called GU and it's a sister brand of Uniqlo. So this was 990 yen, this little cute toque, which is like $10 Canadian-ish. Like look at this little toque. It's so cute, look at it. What a vibe. I also got this classic turtleneck with like a little frill situation. All of their turtlenecks, like again, GU, good quality. I think this was like 10 or $12. Like I live in turtlenecks during the winter, so I'm really excited about this. Um, I didn't do much clothes sh shopping because I have enough clothes, but I did get a couple like little things. I got this little tank top too. Also from GU, just like a simple little tank top to wear to bed kind of thing. I also got these like unbelievably cute, effortless, chic, just like simple flat pointed shoes from GU and they were 20 bucks. Like, they're perfect. And lastly, I got this like nude, simple slip dress that will look cute with that um, turtleneck, looks cute with a t-shirt. I wore this every single day after I got it in Japan and even when I got home. Also from GU, $14, just like, is it's really giving Uniqlo, but just like simple, effortless, timeless. I really love all of the little pieces that I did end up buying while I was there. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the last few weird but wonderful things that I bought. Guys, these pills are meant to be for hangovers. What an easy little gift that you can pack and bring home. I only really got drunk one night that I was in Japan and it was the night of like one of my good friend's weddings, which was the whole reason why I went to Japan in the first place. Uh, I took three of those before we like went out to the club and had like a crazy night and I, I felt fine the next day. Like normally that would obliterate me, but these work really well. I don't know what's in them or what they do, um, but a hangover cure, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm I'm gonna just go for it. They're supposed to be liver supporting pills. Um, so yeah, if you see these, give them a try. Like, they worked for me. Do keep in mind, this is not medical advice, so try them at your, at your own risk. Another random thing that I bought are these like mosquito patches. So they're like little band-aids, little stickers that you can stick onto bug bites and it makes them stop itching. If you live in Canada, you know how much of a struggle the bug bite situation is here. I'm also heading down to Costa Rica in a month where I can only anticipate I'm going to get eaten alive as I normally do. So I will be putting these to the test. Another random thing that I got in Japan is this Hinoki essential oil. If you guys watched my previous video about Hinoki powder baths, if you haven't, I'll link it in the description down below because it is pretty insane how incredibly deeply healing Hinoki trees are in Japan. So Hinoki is the Japanese word for cypress and these specific type of cypress trees that only grow in the Nara prefecture of Japan are harvested and used for their essentially deep healing properties. So I picked up one of these, oh my gosh, essential oils that will just forever remind me of the forest sense of Japan. And you're meant to like put a little bit of oil on this like little piece of wood and it's like a diffuser, oh my God. Oh, it smells so good. I got this in Doragawa, like up in the mountains of Japan at like a random little convenience store. So, um, you know, it's the real deal. And no trip to Japan is complete without a Japanese knife. So yeah, I have been meaning to unbox and open this because I've been cutting my fruits, my vegetables, my everything in the kitchen like a peasant with a non-Japanese knife. This was not expensive. I think you can really go all out and spend like hundreds of dollars, but then also maybe just, I think I spent 40 bucks on this and it came with a little sharpener. Where's the sharpener? Yeah, it did. Yeah, what a good deal, 40 bucks? knife sharpener thing. It's like a little book. I don't know how it works. Well, 
I will have to figure out how to open this. I'll probably ask my brother who is a trained chef. I am not. Oh yeah, I forgot I got this. I don't even remember what it looks like, but it was like a little pot that I bought for like my plants. Oh my gosh. It's perfect, guys, look at it. It's like a little sake cup. I guess I could use it for espresso, but I really love lotus flowers. And I saw this at like a little market in Kyoto. So I just, it was cute, so I had to buy it. Okay, and then one of my very last things, in fact, this will probably be the last thing, is this little tiny coin purse, fish coin purse, that perfectly fits my AirPods. <laughs> like. <laughs> The actual joy that this brought me when I bought this, brought it home because I'm like, I wonder if it'll fit my AirPods. It fit them perfectly. I'm like, I'm obsessed. So yeah, this was just another fun little thing that I got in Japan and I'm obsessed and I love it. Okay, so I mean, I think that that wraps up my Japan haul, guys. Like. I feel like I'm missing some things, but I mean, to be fair, I got home like almost two months ago and started using some of the things, but I kept the majority of it packed for the day when I had the energy and the like mental and physical presence to like pull everything out, talk about it and show it to you guys. And I'm really glad that I did. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments down below or something that you maybe tried that I need to try the next time I go back to Japan, which might be in the spring. Um, or let me know if you've tried any of these things before in the past, your experience with them. I'm always so curious to hear. And I do know that I promised I would tell the story about my dog at the end of this video. So uh, for those of you who are signing off and don't wanna hear the story, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it so much. And if you wanna hang out for another couple of minutes, I will tell the tale uh, that has taken me a very long time to be able to tell. Okay, I need to smell the hanoki <laughs> before I get into this. Oh, guys, I don't even know where to start with this one, but my little dog, Rupert, is, is no longer with us. And if you've been following me for a while, either on Instagram, I'm at Emma Tara, or on YouTube here, you would know that I have, or I had, a very precious tiny little angel named Rupert. My little teacup, three pound um, Morky, who has traveled the world with me, essentially. He's been to Panama, he's been to Colombia, Mexico, the US, like he's just been my little travel buddy for the last two and a half years. And we didn't bring him to Japan. It was tough for me to decide to bring him or not, because as you can imagine, a 15 hour flight, that's not fair for a dog. So I had him staying with my mom. My mom has always been a dog person. I trust her with him. and. And this didn't happen with my mom. It happened with a different family member, unfortunately. But after two weeks of him being at my mom's, um, this other family member wanted to come and take him for a walk, take him out for a spin because he's just like so cute and tiny and lovable and adorable and just like everybody wants him. And like, I get it, but you know, this person was also told, do not bring him to a park with other large dogs. Do not bring him around other large dogs because he is three pounds. Guys, I'm not kidding you. He, he was three pounds. And the day that I got to Doragawa, which if you haven't seen that video yet, <laughs> I recommend you watch it. Down below, I will link it. It took me like seven or eight hours to get to Doragawa. Like I took freaking like eight trains, a cab, buses. Like it took me forever to get up into the mountains. And the night that I got there was a full moon. It was a super blue moon. It was like August 31st. It was a full moon in Pisces. And I remember looking up at the moon. It was like nine o'clock at night. I'm finally resting, setting, settling into my hostel and thinking, oh, I'm gonna do like a little blue, uh, full moon mantra, a little blue super moon mantra. Like let's look up the full moon. Let's see what it means. And I looked it up and it said, full moon in Pisces, so water sign. I had just gotten to like one of the number one cities in all of Japan for water, wow. I'm like, oh, that's weird, that's interesting. Water, water, water. I'm reading what this new full moon has to do, energetically speaking. It's like, you're going to experience like big feelings, lots of tears, waves of emotion, like really deep, dark feelings, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I just got to like the most beautiful place in Japan. And yes, I see the water symbolism, but I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, let's, that means what it means. 
Fast forward like three hours and I'm getting a FaceTime call from my partner who is back here in Ottawa calling me saying that um, this family member just got off the phone with them and our dog Rupert was attacked by another large unleashed dog and they don't think he's gonna make it. This is my FaceTime call that I received at like midnight as I'm falling asleep. As I'm preparing for a three day trek, I had gone all the way to Doragawa, by the way, to find Praying Mantis Cave, a cave that I had read about online that there was no Google images, there was no nothing. You can't find this place on Google Maps, but I have this weird affinity for praying mantises and so I really wanted to like find Praying Mantis Cave. That was the whole reason why I went there, okay? I promise you this has a, a purpose. So he tells me Rupert's not gonna make it. I don't think he's gonna make it. This turns out to be one of like the worst nights of my life. I didn't sleep that night. I was just, you know, waiting for updates as they bring him to the vet, try to revive him, try to bring him back. But um, unfortunately this dog that attacked him was off leash and was like a huge Rottweiler that just like, you know, one bite and, and he was done. So Rupert died on the full moon in Pisces and he was a Pisces, which is kind of weird. He was born uh, March 9th and I thought, wow, that's really weird. That's that's super weird that he died on the full super moon of his own sign. I'm really into astrology and stuff like this, okay guys? If you're still here, I love you, thank you. Um, but it gets weirder. No, it, it actually gets weirder. Around 4 a.m. that same night, I forced myself to try and get at least a couple hours of sleep because I know that I just made all of this effort to get to this place in the middle of nowhere and I, I need to sleep. I'm nowhere near an airport. It's not like I can even fly home and get home to deal with this if I even wanted to, okay? So I go to sleep, I wake up a couple hours later and I'm thinking, I've gotta make the most of this day. Um, you know, I made a few phone calls to the friends and family to, to, to share the news and to get updates as I needed. But then I went out into Doragawa. I went out into the little mountainous town um, to just try and take my mind off of the horrific evening that I had just had and the unbelievable reality which was now my life that my dog that I had for not even three years was now gone and guys I had shared so many precious memories with this dog like he was just my little travel bestie you know it's just if you've had a dog or any pet and you've lost that pet you know the absolute heartache and it was just so incredibly difficult being hundreds of thousands of miles away from home that I couldn't even like be there to deal with it you know I'm in this beautiful place by myself like it was just it was really hard Anyways, I go off to try and enjoy my day and honestly, mostly just heal within nature. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I do a cold plunge, I do a dip, I do a hike. I'm literally crying all day. The number of people that must have like passed me thinking, wow, this girl must really hate hiking because I'm like bawling on the hike thinking about my little Rue. But at the, the end of the day, I found Praying Mantis Cave. It was amazing, it was beautiful, it was stunning, it was, it was, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I get back to my, my hostel and I, I finally get a chance to talk to my mom. And my mom says to me, because she had had him for the whole two weeks, this didn't happen on my mom's watch, this happened on somebody else's watch. But my mom says to me, Em, like, I can't believe he's gone, you know? He was just here like two days ago, he was just here and we were in the backyard and he was trying to get my attention and I went over to him and he was trying to get my attention because he was in the grass. And I saw in the grass a praying mantis. And I was like, what? What do you mean you saw a praying? She said, there was a praying mantis in the grass that Rupert saw and brought me over to like, alert me of this praying mantis. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, mom, the whole reason why I am here in this random town in the middle of nowhere is because I'm looking for a praying mantis cave. I went, I, and I found it today, I went to praying mantis cave. So that was really weird. It gets weirder. It gets, it gets weirder. <sighs> Let me just huff my Hinoki Cypress oil. <laughs> so that, was the phone call conversation. That night, I'm in a, I'm staying in a hostel. I'm the only person staying in this place. Like, truly there is no one else. And the hostel owner, I walk into like the, um, like 
common room area where you can like eat dinner, you can like read, you can just chill. It's just like the common space if you're not staying up in your room. So I'm in the common space and I'm just like working, answering emails, editing photos, just got off the phone with my mom. And up until that point, I had not really heard any like North American music, if you will. And the hostel owner is playing in the common room space, John Mayer on repeat. John Mayer is like my number one favorite artist and just like soothes my anxiety. And earlier this year, I went to California all the way to Palm Springs just to see him live. So John Mayer is just like really special to me. And I'm like, wow, John Mayer. And it was John Mayer song after John Mayer song after John Mayer song, which is so totally weird in the middle of nowhere in Japan in the mountains. So I say to the owner, I'm like, oh, I really like the music. Like, thank you for playing John Mayer. And he's like, oh, you like John Mayer. I love John Mayer, he's my favorite artist, he says to me. His name was June something that starts with an M. I forget his last name, but his first name was June. And he said, JM, JM and me, John Mayer, we have the same, like you could tell he just loved John Mayer also because they had the same initials, which was just like so cute and just precious. So as John Mayer is playing, I'm eating my dinner. I'm kind of like getting ready to go to sleep, get my life together and like cry myself to sleep basically. And it's 11 o'clock at night. I haven't seen June for a few hours now, um, but the common room closes at 11. So he comes into the common room kind of out of nowhere at like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm expecting him to tell me like, hey, just so you know, everything's closed. Like, please pack up and go to your room now. But instead he says to me, there's a praying mantis outside looking at you. I'm like, Sorry, what? Sorry, what? Like I, the only conversation I'd had with him up until that point was the John Mayer conversation. He says, there's a praying mantis outside and it's looking at you. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I look at the window and on the window just above my head where I was working, I could see the outline. I run outside. There's a huge praying mantis on the glass of the window of the hostel that I was staying in the night after Rupert died, staring at me under the full moon, the day I found Praying Mantis Cave. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I'm gonna put a plug of video in somewhere here. June comes out and he says to me, those are very rare in this area. He says, very rare to see them. And they mean good luck. And I mean, God bless June because I just was bawling my eyes out, like truly trying to keep it together, but like sobbing uncontrollably. I'm like, this is just so weird, right? Like, is that not just the most serendipitous? I feel like it was a sign. It was a sign from Rupert. It was a sign from the universe that I was where I meant was meant to be and that he was safe and in a better place and, and all the, and that everything was gonna be okay. Because obviously, as you can imagine, when another person's dog kills your dog, there's a lot of stickiness that comes with that that I did have to work through. Um, but that's what happened to Rupert in a nutshell. That was a really long story. I had to tell it. I had to tell it because um, he was a very, very huge part of my life. He came to Mexico with me to get my eggs frozen. He was my emotional support baby. And I'm absolutely devastated to say the least. And just my heart is shattered for the way that he was taken from me too soon. But that's what happened to Rupert. And um, maybe you will get to see the next chapter of my dog life soon. All of this to say, hold your fur babies close because you just never know when the last day is the last day. And that is why it took me so long to do this Japan haul video. I've been like trying to balance all of my other videos. I was just in Austin. That video just came out recently or will be soon. There's just been a lot going on and you can imagine like the depression of coming home from an unbelievable place like Japan and coming home to an empty house with no dog was just really, really hard. So anyways, if you made it this far into the video, I love you so much. Um, and I really appreciate you being here and listening to my sob story, but I did need to tell the whole story. So that's what happened to Ruby. I hope you enjoyed the haul, the tea, all of the things. Please subscribe, like, leave me a comment down below or find me on Instagram to see some of the other videos. 
and moments that I've shared about Rupert over the last um, few years that he was mine. And um, yeah, I just really appreciate you being here and, and holding some of this space for me. So we will see you in the next video. I promise it won't be as sad. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I have an idea and it should be a really, really heartwarming and exciting one. So we will see you in the next one.